So now in this video we're going to be talking about 18650 uh, batteries. I got four of them here. These are really cheap. They don't store much energy. They're actually very terrible batteries. But uh, that makes them good for uh, practicing. Because if you can make a working circuit with these, you can make a lot better one with better batteries. But in any case, we're going to focus on this module here. There's one next to it. You can see along the line there, we can snap this off. I got five of these for $6 on Amazon. Now when I look at the link, it's uh, 10 for $10. That's your only option. But in any case, these uh, 18650 batteries I have, they're in this battery pack here that connects them in series. So this unit is just for a single battery. Now, that's just a uh, single voltage wise so from 3 volts to 4.2 volts that's what this should operate I haven't tested it out yet but that's what it should operate at so you can put these in parallel so they're next to each other but they're actually connected we got uh, black right there we'll take a voltage measurement so I put this together a while ago and so we can see the voltage of this battery here is uh, 4 volts right there so I'm pretty sure I charged them with my balance charger. That's what all these wires are for to monitor the voltage of each of the batteries. You get the main power through through there to uh, the two ends there but it monitors the voltage of each cell if one gets higher or lower than the others then it adds or reduces current to that particular one until they all line up again. But in any case there you can see that we got four volts there. If I go there it's the same voltage. That's because there's a wire connecting there. To get this battery's voltage, we got to go over here. And uh, probes are backwards. That's the that's the thing right there. And uh, they go one way and then the other, one way and then the other. But if you're okay with negative voltages, that's fine. So there we finally got a connection port. You can see that one is lower right there. And I'm just going to go here. It'll be negative, but that's no big deal. So it's just because the probes are backwards. There you can see we got about four and we got about four so I'm pretty sure these all charge to 4.2 volts you can expect them to drift down to four volts and then they tend to hold there so this one's probably a little uh, less good than those but in any case we will just pop out let's pop out this one since this one's already off a bit right there and we will look at this unit just with a single battery now so as I said before we could connect them in parallel we're not going to do that so positive to negative, positive, negative, you know, positive for all of them up there, negative all there. We directly connect those two sides and it's just like having a single battery but with more capacity. And as I said before, this is a junk battery. You know it's junk if it's fire. And I saw somebody else that was posting batteries that look exactly like Ultra Fire and uh, the name was a little different. I think it was Ultra and then I uh, can't remember what it was uh, fit I think it was ultra fit and apparently they sell those at uh, I forget what it's called at uh, uh, markets or something somewhere you know so anything that looks like this battery it's probably uh, junk but it still works as a lithium-ion battery just a really bad one and so now to uh, test out the charging first off these uh, alligator clips we're not connecting to the pads very well so I just took some wire soldered it on there and then crimped and also added a little solder over here to these uh, little blades right there to get a better connection and so first off this unit is set for a USB right now so in order to do that I have to hit the green button so now I set it off of USB we hit uh, USB and you can see we are at the USB. The output is off though. Fortunately, you have to hit the power button to get the USB on. And we have a maximum of 2,500 milliamps. So 2.5 amps. I'm used to talking about milliamps. But uh, there we go. We will go down just to 10 to start off uh, more safely, just in case something goes wrong. And you can see that uh, no current's going. So this is just a regular phone. USB right here and I think it has to go that way oh that way right there there you go you can see the red light is on and it's using a little bit of current so it looks like a couple milliamps two or three milliamps well it is just sitting there now we 
are going to uh, add the jumpers really quick. So that's the uh, battery positive and the battery negative. Got to make sure we get those right. And the other end is not connected to anything. Do the same thing with the uh, black one there. Not connected to anything. So I put our cheap 18650 battery right here in this. And these pins aren't connected to anything right now. Just the uh, two ends of the battery for these two pins. We got positive up there. And so let's uh, connect this to positive. And so I don't know how great of a connection we're getting here. But I think we're doing okay right there. These pins are probably a bit more alligator clip friendly so I don't want to short anything and uh, so leave that in there and we will go to this one right here right there and now you can see even though I have current limited to uh, 10 milliamps this says 16 milliamps right there but you can see a flashing light well it is charging I think you can see that see a little better right there and we will Go set there, it's back to a current, and work the current back up. And so I was, depending on how I had the alligator clips, I was kind of stuck at between about 60 and 86 milliamps in that range, and it was wavering. So soldering the uh, wire to there and adding the blade connector was a lot better. I may have been able just to clip to the, the wire. But uh, there you can see, we got about 200, almost 200 milliamps, it looks like it is putting into there. Now this does have internal resistance. That might be limiting the current somewhat. But uh, there you go. We are charging this right now. And so now we've been charging for a little bit. You can see current's gone down. We're going to look at why uh, current is going down. And we got to be careful we don't short circuit anything. But uh, in any case... I'm just going to put this to uh, any point that connects directly to the battery. So these wires go directly to the battery. I got them backwards. But uh, that's okay. The meter can go backwards. That's no problem. But there you can see that uh, once I get a good connection, it looks like we have about 4.2 volts right here. There we go. And so the voltage is really close to the battery maximum voltage of 4.2 volts. And so it doesn't want to exceed that. You can see it's holding it steady. And so this is probably going to be the final voltage, I'm guessing. But we need to keep current going in there. So I'll remove this alligator clip. Again, remember, this is a bad battery. It's got high internal resistance and stuff. So stuff is going to be a little awkward. Let's see if I can connect this without... Uh, I got them backwards again. But there you can see we got about 3.9. And so it's going to just keep giving a little bit of current. As it pumps in current, it pushes up the voltage. I had the probes backwards if that bugs you. It's no big deal in real uh, as far as anything's concerned. But uh, it may bug you to see that negative voltage when you're dealing with the battery. Battery should not have negative voltage. But there you can see it's uh, 3.9. And uh, when you're pumping current into it, though, it raises the voltage at... Uh, the contact points and stuff because it's got some internal resistance and so the voltage is adding up but then when you remove it that voltage uh, quickly drops down so you can't look at battery voltages uh, alone when it comes to while they are being charged or while they're delivering power to a load because as they're delivering power to a load it will look like the voltage is lower and when they are charging, it will look like the voltage is higher than it actually is. We will know this is fully charged when this gets down to about 0 milliamps. Remember, we needed about 3 milliamps just to power this. And so we'll probably see a little bit of current, but it should probably get down to about uh, 3 milliamps right there when this is completely charged. So now this was done charging. We had... 3 milliamps which uh, I was okay with and before I could get the camera rolling all of a sudden we're back to 60 milliamps right now and so the reason why I kind of don't like that is that we fully charged but there you can see we got uh, 4.1 and now it's charging it back up 
and so actually that that may be okay but uh, in any case we didn't overcharge that's the main thing we stayed below 4.2 volts and uh, so that's pretty good and now we're gonna try to uh, discharge this so we really only have one shot once we uh, start that other than recharging this again and starting over so in any case let's look over here you can see we're holding four volts pretty well there and we're gonna take this USB plug on the other end of it I have alligator clips right there and I'm gonna put them across this is 20 ohms of resistance 10 ohms there 10 ohms there they're connected there that is in series and a better battery I would let more current go through but this is a pretty crappy battery so it will probably heat up pretty quick as well these so this is really snug plugging this into here that is probably good enough and we should have five volts here so there's a we saw that it limits how much the battery will charge and so we need to get five volts we need a booster and there I only see four volts so that's not promising at all but it may change under a load this is very high resistance and it may be looking for uh, running current to fully uh, work so there's no polarity with resistors we can plug one to that end and one to that end and as soon as we do let's see if we have five volts and you can see the flashing light right there and there we go we actually have five volts across there so that's pretty high current flowing too and uh, the uh, probe got stuck now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna unplug this quick and grab my thermal camera alright so I got the uh, thermal camera you can see they already warmed up a bit and let's plug this back in we already saw that we got the 5 volts and uh, there you can see that jumper that may be warm for me touching it even so these aren't real hot let's compare them to uh, my finger there yeah there you can see but they are warming up they're creating heat and uh, so that's the main takeaway now we will uh, turn that off and take a look at the voltage again actually we'll have five volts as long as that LED is flashing I am pretty sure so that's the uh, voltage coming out right there and it's taking it from the uh, battery whose voltage is uh, see if I can get a good connection there there we go it looks like it's getting down towards three volts and it's supposed to shut off at three so we can get down to 2.5 but uh, that's it if it goes below 2.5 this is uh, really bad so I'll keep an eye on this and uh, there we go it looks like it's uh, looks like it's leveling about 2.8 so let's check the voltage here still holding 5 volts right there so I thought this shut off at 3 but maybe it as I said before when the battery is under load its voltage drops a little bit and uh, so it may account for that maybe at 2.5 it will stop and then it assumes it goes back to 3 alright so now we are down to should not be 1.2 wow it actually is 1.2 so it was just 2.6 so that is bad we do not want it to keep running so now the voltage is gonna go up again on the uh, battery when I go to the alligator clip there you can see it's up to a uh, 3.7 right there and uh, maybe I should have had it at a good spot yeah we're actually down to 1.2 volts under load so that's not good it's supposed to stop before that so in any case hopefully the other ones stop at 3 volts 
I'll have to check later. But in any case, this is a new unit for me, and first time I did this uh, test, and so probably wasn't the best video, but hopefully you still enjoyed. Went kind of long. I have better batteries, but uh, like we just saw, it let the voltage drop down. I wouldn't want the voltage to drop down like that with good batteries, and uh, so as soon as you cut the load, though, it recovers a bit. But in uh, any case, that should have stopped once it saw the voltage get that low. So I do not like that. I'll try the other ones. But in any case, I bought these. They were about a dollar each, so not terribly expensive. It was worth it. I'm trying to make my own battery packs. And it'd be nice you can take these. And so we didn't see much charge here. One battery by itself doesn't have a terrible amount of charge, even... Uh, good ones good ones have a lot more than this though, but you can put them parallel so you can connect all the negatives and all the positive together and then their capacity the amount of energy they store adds up and uh, So as fast as this took to drain if we had ten of them in parallel It would have took ten times as long if they have the exact same capacity so in any case for safety's sake I'm gonna unclip the uh, battery and uh, again, I have to make sure that uh, no metal comes across these two. But uh, in any case, cheap battery, not much energy, not a terrible risk. I'm a lot more careful with my better batteries. Also, I have these bags, and I put them in a bigger bag, but it's going to be loud. I'll uh, get away from the camera. But you unvelcro it, same with the big one, but the big one has a zipper. And so these batteries, I looked at battery failures and testing uh, bags like this the ones with the uh, zipper and so they blast out explosive gas and these things puff up but the heat the the gas is blown away from the heat so they just kind of vent out while these uh, puff up so you don't want them airtight you want uh, some air to get through but you want to keep the heat from getting out so it doesn't uh, combust outside the bag or whatnot and uh, so I keep them in these bags here for safety also but also I do the most risky stuff with my crappy batteries that don't store much energy so they probably don't have much chemistry in there they're knockoffs that's how they probably save money by not putting the chemistry but if I really liked the results from this test I, I did not like that final result where it discharged to a volt then I would do the next test with good batteries and hopefully get better results but in any case Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you turn the multimeter off when you're done. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.